Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. You desperately want weekly tips about training and diet and recovery, and guess what? I have at least one for you today going lighter on glute bridges and hip thrusts. I promise my eye isn't itchy. I actually just started crying because it's such a beautiful tip for you guys to take home with you. So here's the deal. To get your maximum glute growth, you may draw, try a variety of glute bridges and hip thrusts. To me, it's a derivative of the same movement. Like, you know, when the people on the videotapes I watch do the sex, it's that movement. And some people, not all, when they go heavy, and heavy by our RP definition is like sets of five to 10 reps close to failure, when they do that on glute bridges specifically in a variety of kinds of sort of hip extensions, they don't feel it as much in their glutes anymore as it just becomes kind of an exercise of lifting the weight. Like especially when people post like PRs like with a ton of weight, like 315 or 405 pounds for like females, like I hip thrusted 405 for 10 and it's like a 130 pound girl and you're like, gee whiz, her, her glutes physically don't look muscular enough to do that. And it turns out it becomes more of a whole body movement at that point, which isn't a bad thing if you're doing it for athletic performance for like wrestling and jujitsu and hip thrusting is important. Or if you're an adult film actor, actress, maybe that's important as well. But it becomes less about hitting the glutes. We really, in a technical sense, lose the mind-muscle connection considerably in some cases. Now, some people, they love doing sets of five to 10. It really hits them. It gets them sore. It gets them continued growth and progress. And listen, if you're in that case, you're one of those people, rock it out, knock it out, keep going five to 10, bread and butter, no problem. But many people are not in that camp and they just think the glute bridging and hip thrusting doesn't work for them. Some of those people, it really just doesn't work for all that great. They don't like the exercise. I personally am not a huge fan for how it works for me, but for other folks that I've seen train and manage and supervise their training, it's a great movement if some of those people do the following. Lighten the load and do sets of 15 to 20 reps and control the eccentric. And at the top, when you've thrusted your glutes, like having sex with the air kind of motion, you contract your glutes maximally, push your hips through, and hold that top position for one full second. Not like a, like a quick one count, it's like one 1,000 down. You guys see me doing, you know what I'm saying? You can infer what my hips look like down there. It's, it's pretty, it's beautiful. So you might get a lot more that way in terms of mind-muscle connection, in terms of pump, in terms of soreness, and dot, 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 in terms of gains. So if you've abandoned glute thrusting or hip thrusting or glute bridging, all the same shit, then maybe come back to it and give this little tip a try, a little, just a little tweak just for you guys, just on this YouTube, just Renaissance Periodization. Like, subscribe, comment, do YouTube things. See you next week.